Failing to plan is planning to fail. What? One of the most important things that you can do to improve your time management is to plan. Having a written checklist that's taped to the wall or that's laminated and stuck to your clipboard is an excellent way to keep yourself from forgetting steps in the claims process. Also, using your checklist along with a timer can help you to shave time off of each one of those individual pieces, each one of those steps, so that you can see where you're spending a lot of time and where you can try to figure out, really concentrate on reducing the amount of time that you spend doing that step. For example, importing and labeling photos. You, there are absolutely ways that you can reduce the amount of time that you spend doing that. And that's a very time consuming task, but it's 100% critical, you have to do it. Now, it's one thing to say that we're streamlining our workflow. That can and should mean that we are cutting things out of our steps that don't contribute to the outcome that we're trying to accomplish with the claim, which is closing the claim quickly, with good customer service and a high degree of accuracy. However, there are a lot of steps that you absolutely can't cut out. You can only trim them. And in a lot of cases, a lot of things can't be trimmed any further. So how can a claims checklist make you faster? Reason number one, building speed in claims requires repetition. And I would even argue that the accuracy of your claim, the quality of the claim that you turn in, plus your customer service also will benefit from repetition. When we know exactly what's required in each step, we can concentrate on building up smoothness and speed. If we're winging it and counting on trying to remember each step as we go, we'll lose momentum and lose our place because we spend all of our energy trying to remember which step is next. In order to build the muscle memory required to get through your claim quickly and accurately and not miss any steps, we want to be able to smoothly move from step to step without flailing around trying to remember what's next. Reason number two, so much time is wasted doing corrections. And most of the time, those corrections are a direct result of forgetting a step in the claims process. If we run through our checklist as we're completing our claim or working through the claims process, then we minimize the chance that we're going to forget something that's going to result in a correction. And this speeds things up for us in so many ways, not the least of which is having to get into a claim again after you've already been in it and thought you had it closed. And reason number three, time lost doing reinspections and supplements. Your checklist can and should include things for different types of claims. For example, if you're doing hail claims, your checklist really wants to include something in there so that you don't forget to ask the customer if they have any interior damage. Because hail is mostly on the outside of houses, a lot of times the insured will forget or they won't tell you. You have to ask them, which later on, if you didn't ask them, you're gonna get a call and they're gonna say, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, we have a water spot on the ceiling in my daughter's bedroom upstairs. And you either have to go back out and get photos of that, especially if you wanna bill on it, and you're gonna have to jump back into that estimate, reopen it as a supplement, if it hasn't been, if it's been paid, if it hasn't been paid, you have to reopen as a correction. This presents a yet another chance for error because if you open it as a supplement and it hasn't been paid yet, then you're gonna screw up the, the claim summary and the payment tracker and all that stuff and you're gonna have to go back. It just adds so much work. So making one small mistake or missing one small step can compound into a huge time consuming bunch of things that you now have to do. It can also save time in your scheduling if you ask ahead of time how many outbuildings somebody has. Because strangely, outbuildings seem to add a lot of time to, to uh, doing a scope, doing a field inspection. Because each one has a roof, has gutters or can have gutters and siding and windows and doors and all those things that you have to look at. And you have to drag your ladder into the backyard and take a look at that outbuilding. So if, even if they have one shed and you're required to get on the roof or get photos of the roof and do a, a full hail uh, test square on, on every slope on a little on a shed, you have to drag your ladder back there. And if they have two sheds in their backyard or four sheds or sit, I mean, you don't know unless you ask, do you have any outbuildings? Do you have any sheds or anything in the backyard that you want to have us look at? Well, yeah, you know, I've got three sheds. One of them's a, one of them's my shop and the other one, you know, it's got the lawnmower in it, da, 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 da. Now you can prepare. You can say, all right, well, that guy's claim is going to take a little bit longer. So I'm not going to run into the next appointment after that. I can make room for it. So what does the checklist look like? Well, it's essentially the steps. It's every critical thing that you have to do to get that claim to that part of that claim 
completed. So you have importing the claim and setting up the claim. You have routing and scheduling and co making contact calls. Each thing is its own checklist. And then you have your scoping checklist and then your estimate writing checklist. So you can have multiple checklists to do one process for one company, for one insurance company. And following a claims checklist is as simple as looking at the first thing on the list, download claims, set up company header. And just as you set the claims up, you just do each one of those things. You look at your list and you do that next thing. It's as simple as that. And it's one of the, the best things that you can do to help yourself save time, be more efficient, reduce the chances of errors that are gonna add so much time to, to getting your claims done. Because remember, we don't get paid by the hour. We wanna be sure that we close that claim and it stays closed as much as possible. The more time we have to spend on messing with claims and doing reinspections and supplements on something that we shouldn't because it was an, our mistake, the more time we have in the day and the week and the month to add more claims, to, to have higher production numbers so that we are getting more claims and we're earning more money during that storm season, which only lasts March through Halloween, more or less. I would highly recommend using a physical checklist that you can check things off or that you can look at without having to dig through your computer to find. I put some claims checklists over on adjustertv.com and I put them in there as Word documents that have kind of the basic fundamentals in there and then you can go ahead and add to those as you, as you see fit as with each different carrier. I mean, you could have one for Safeco and one for State Farm and you have one for Allstate. You know, some of them are gonna be long and some of them are gonna be short because you know, Allstate has a different process than State Farm does. And State Farm has a different process than American Family or the Hartford or whoever it is. So you could have a folder that has the Hartford, Allstate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And each one has their own checklist. I'm not going to give you checklists for those companies. And I know so many people are gonna ask. You just have to work claims for those companies and they will help you. If, if you call your manager and say, hey, you know, do you have some kind of a checklist or a job aid that can help me walk, walk through this part of the claim or this part of the process or the whole claims process, everything, absolutely everything I need to know, they're gonna oblige you. They're gonna say, if your manager's cool and if they don't wanna have to do a bunch of extra work because of you, they're gonna give you that information and you can build your checklist and you can also build it as you go. You get file kicked back because you forgot to do the company header or you forgot this or that, then it goes on your checklist. You just jump into that checklist and you, you know, pull the old one off the wall, print a new one out, stick it back up there and you're off to the races. So, or you can write it on there if you want to, I guess. Now, will you always need a physical checklist? No, not necessarily. You're gonna memorize uh, the claims processes and it's gonna be, especially at the end of a long summer of doing the same for the same company over and over and over again, doing three, four, five, six hundred, eight hundred claims. You'll be able to do it in your sleep. But anytime, even I've been doing this a long time, anytime you change to a new carrier, a new independent adjusting firm that has different procedures, absolutely put put a checklist together for yourself. You know, the minimum thing that it's gonna do is gonna it's gonna woe down the calls that you have to make to your manager with real simple basic questions. Don't forget to check out Adjust Your TV on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash Adjust Your TV and share this video, hit the like button, and for more independent adjuster videos, subscribe. And thank you guys so much for watching and have a great storm. This is Adjuster TV. I really like this new lighting setup.